we are on our way for an off-road adventure. We're fueling up at the station. The sun is setting. We're running a little late, but we're on the way. So without further ado, more truck venture. All right, so originally I was supposed to be in Utah right now of all places doing a camp and off-road adventure with 15 trucks part of Southwest Raptor runs the group that I hang out with a lot and go do a lot of runs with and then we were gonna do uh, Sand Hollow we were gonna do Zion National Park but that got canceled so uh, a lot of things are being canceled right now I have this whole week off of work I planned this back in January and it's now March so instead of that I decided I'm going to take the time and I'm going to go out into the forests of Oregon, some areas around me locally here, and do some camps, make some content, be away from people, have a good time. So that's what we're doing, and we're off to the first campsite. Okay, we made it out of the city and into the forests of Oregon. We are in the Tillamook State Forest right now, actually. Um, we're in a clearing area, way out in the middle of nowhere. Uh, just a fine little place to camp uh, in the forest. Once you get off the highway, we drove another 40 minutes out into the forest to find a good spot, very secluded. See if we can see some stars tonight, have a good time. It's pretty dark right now, but in the morning, uh, when we look out here, we are going to see a very nice uh, foresty area, and I think the weather's going to be pretty, pretty nice. It's kind of crisp, but it's not wet right now, which is great. Uh, March weather here. Now, my truck is filling out a lot of light for camp setup. And here we go. So Nick uh, brought his work light to light up his uh, tent action. Battery operated. That worked out. I brought my truck. Tent set up. Rooftop tent. Looking pretty good. All right, so we are here out in the woods of Oregon, and we're gonna do a little kitchen boondoggle time. I like to do a Brad's kitchen boondoggle or camp boondoggle, as it were, because uh, hey, I like to cook. Uh, to get us started, because it is a brisk evening here in March in Oregon, uh, I had heated up a little bone broth, and that's gonna get us warmed up. Nice little camp drink to warm you up. All right. That's good. I'm going to add a little bit of pepper and some cayenne pepper so I like it spicy. Yeah, that's good. <clears throat> All right, bone broth to warm me up at camp. Got a fire going. Uh, now we're going to do a boondoggle. Tonight I'm going to do um, ahi tuna. We're going to do a seared ahi tuna. Uh, crusted with pepper, some vegetables. I think I'm going to cook some of the vegetables on the fire itself. Uh, and then, yeah, we're going to relax and have a nice, nice time here, isolated in the forest. 
Should be good. Okay, I've got cast iron here. It's getting warm. I'm going to use some extra virgin olive oil. This cast iron is seasoned already. Always take care of your cast iron. Don't let it rust. It's the worst thing. So we're going to let that get warm. Nice base of olive oil for the tuna. And we're good here. You know, having a glove helps if you're going to work with hot cast iron. <clears throat> we are going to put a sprig of rosemary in here to cook with the oil a little bit and get that flavor. And I'm going to cut a lime in preparation. I'm going to use some of, that, some of this lime on this fish. So these are about ready. I like to do about three to five minutes on each side in cast iron on high heat. Cook to your pre preference and temperature and also remember to make sure your fish is fresh. Uh, you can, anytime you're eating anything raw, you know, all the warning signs of that. So uh, make sure you're cooking it through and then when the fish is flaky, that's probably the best. There we go. We did a seared ahi tuna at camp, cast iron skillet, cooked some peppers over the fire, and then also we cooked a medley of vegetables in the same cast iron skillet uh, once the fish was done being cooked and set aside for a minute. Vegetables cook much quicker, um, so you can do that in a couple of minutes on high heat with some oil. And there you go. That just goes to show you that you can have nice camp food uh, when you're out camping. You don't have to just eat out of a can or roast hot dogs on the fire, you can eat well. All right, good morning campers. We are out here morning after in the camp and we're gonna take a look and see where we're at here. Let me turn this camera around and you can see that the forest goes on for a while here. And you can also hear the distant sound of chainsaws. And you will see traces of clear cut because this is an act of logging zone. Uh, some people probably don't like that. It is an industry. People make a living out of it. Um, but yeah, here's the pristine landscape. Uh, touched by, man, with logging, but it is here. And it looks really good. Okay, I'm going to show you a little bit about the area we picked to camp at. It's a primitive spot, but it's used fairly frequently, kind of a first come, first serve basis, especially during hunting season. Because if you look here around me, you'll notice uh, things like this makeshift table between two trees, an area to hang pots and pans, traces of tarps being hung in these trees and whatnot. So this is an active area where hunters will come uh, when they go out into the forest to do uh, hunt elk or deer or whatnot uh, here in Oregon.
Okay, we are packing up the camp at the moment. Uh, we have a little thing. I kind of made a I made a mistake. I kept that rooftop tent on my truck well, through the winter, uh, the rainy Oregon winter, and I overestimated how good the PVC cover is going to be to protect it. And it got a little wet in the inside, and then therefore a little bit of mold has appeared. Uh, it's something you have to deal with in Oregon uh, when you have things like canvas tents. So uh, we're going to work on taking care of the mold issue on the tent next, see if we can salvage it. I'm pretty sure we can. It's not a lot. It's just a little bit on the bottom edges, uh, but it definitely needs to be addressed. So hopefully we can clean that up and then what, be able to use it for some more camps, but I don't really want to camp in it uh, until I clean that mold off. So we're going to jump back on the road here and be back for more truck venture. Thank <laughs> you.